Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. The state government says it's still working out if the personal information of Tasmanians has been accessed by hackers. And under fire, Madeleine Ogilvie also defended the government's decision to wait nearly a week before making the incident public. Fronting up after a testing week, three days after announcing a potential data breach via a press release, Madeleine Ogilvie faced the cameras. But the Tasmanian government systems have not been hacked. Now it is that third party that's actually been hacked. Go Anywhere markets itself as a secure way to transfer files, but is now under scrutiny. The minister says no stolen files have emerged yet. We are not aware that any information from the state government has been released or has been accessed. Ms Ogilvie declining to reveal what's been hacked or who could be impacted. Hackers do rely on people responding in a knee-jerk way. Also grilled on the time it took to go public. Made aware on March 25th of the breach, it took until last Friday for the news to be released. In the meantime, an American tech website reported on March 27 the government was a victim. Once I had approval from our team that is doing the investigations to release the information that it was a credible threat, I did that as quickly as I could. Talks about cover-up, talks about the government's complete lack of transparency. Labor says concerns about the software started in January, also criticising the government for not taking the issue seriously. The government probably should have put steps into place long before a week ago. We are years behind other states when it comes to cyber protection. A local expert says the government is following a process. They have come forward, said there's been uh, a breach, uh, and they're still investigating and hopefully we get a lot more details uh, in the days to come. But also warns we're well behind on data security. And whether we're government or private industry, small or big, we all need to be taking cyber a lot more seriously. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. And Minister Ogilvie is also on the back foot over the scope of the inquiry into the state's harness racing industry. Both Labor and the Greens claim the terms of reference don't go far enough in reviewing the Office of Racing Integrity. But Ms Ogilvie says she believes a Ray Murray-led review has the ability to investigate what he sees fit. Paragraph 7 says that he has a broad scope to look at matters pertaining to all of these issues. So, so I'm pretty confident that he has the capacity to do what he needs to do. The Minister also backing the integrity body to continue doing its work while the investigation is running. A 35-year-old Hobart woman has pleaded not guilty to a string of charges linked to February's Harris scarf stabbing. The accused fronting the magistrate's court today, denying two counts of accessory after the fact of attempted murder and one count of willfully obstructing a police officer. She's bailed to reappear in court on April 27. Residents were evacuated from a Ravenswood home last night after fire tore through a unit. Investigations into the blaze continued today after emergency services were called to the Faraday Street property just before nine. No injuries were reported and the fire is believed to be non-suspicious with authorities deeming the blaze accidental. A major infrastructure upgrade at the Port of Devonport is on track for completion in four years. The Premier and Infrastructure Minister inspecting the Keylink works this morning, forecasting an expected boost in tourism numbers once the new Spirit of Tasmania ships arrive. It's a project which Devonport's Mayor hopes will secure the future of a city. All I can say is just thank you for us being able to have this happen here and we can't wait to see how this works for everybody right around the state. Government officials touring and inspecting the progress of Keylink at East Devonport. The upgrade will increase freight capacity at the port by 40% and also add an additional 160,000 passengers via the Spirit of Tasmania. This is a once in a generation, once in 50 year project and we need to continue to create infrastructure that is ahead of the demand. Premier Jeremy Rockliffe touting the project's benefit to Tasmania's growth state product. More than 30 Tasmanian businesses directly involved with Keylink's construction. The result of this infrastructure, accommodating the new spirits, 
increased some $200 million in tourism spend and $130 million gross date product as well. We're building so much infrastructure around Tasmania, not just roads and bridges, but also rail, uh, irrigation infrastructure, uh, hospitals and schools. Alison Jarman looking forward to the new opportunities Keylink will bring to her city. The people over here in the community have embraced it. Um, they're so excited. The project is on track to be completed by 2027. Mark Zita, 7 Tasmanian News. Pressure has eased in Tasmania's major hospitals as new data reveals a big drop in wait lists. Despite the good news, Labor says our district hospitals are being neglected. Grappling a physical disability for more than four years, Sam Strecker says a lack of medical resources in the Derwent Valley has only added to the stress of her health. I had severe arthritis that just fractured my bones and now I have to walk with crutches which makes it really hard for me to have to go into the city um, for specialist appointments. Sam revealing she isn't alone in her struggles. I know at least two families who have talked about the fact that they need to get out of here. It is a lot more difficult for people out here to make their way into Hobart and return and there's a lot of guilt around using the already stretched ambulance services to have some of these needs seen to. So we've actually got people up here in the valley who are going without medical care. Labor claims New Norfolk's hospital is one of 17 underutilised regional facilities. The opposition vowing to increase nursing and allied health services if elected in two years time. The government's had every chance over the last decade to improve services offered through our regional hospitals and they've failed. But the state government says it's already investing in Tasmania's rural services. We will be increasingly utilising our district hospitals to uh, support the community. Meanwhile it's good news for the state's major hospitals. Patients are spending less time in limbo with figures showing Tasmania's elective surgery waitlist is at its lowest since 2017. The Premier promising to give Tasmanians the healthcare system they deserve. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Expect to see an improvement in dental services in Tasmania. New graduates are calling the state home thanks to a new oral health services graduate program which is helping to cut wait times. A further commitment to the health of Tasmanians. Five first year and seven second year dental graduates coming from right across the country supported through the program. There is no other program in the state that is like the program that's being offered currently in Tasmania. The $3.4 million initiative helping them develop and fine tune their skills, providing quality care to all in all corners of the state. If we carry on that support, we carry on developing these young people, using the passion that they come to us and they want to make a difference. Tassie has just been so good with support and skill development. The long term commitment also designed to help retain dental professionals, keeping them here for longer. If we look after them, and we actually support them during their training, they're more likely to come back. So either way, Tasmania gains. With thousands remaining on wait lists, they're also slashing the backlog. It really makes some inroads in uh, the waiting lists and ensuring that uh, Tasmanians uh, get the right care at the right place at the right time. The program even changing the way Tasmanians treat oral health. Oral health is underestimated. The more that we can invest in oral health services, uh, particularly when it comes to intervention in our young people, uh, the healthier our population will be. Victoria Easto, 7 Tasmania News. Building resilience is at the heart of a new state government program to help Tasmanians access food. A three-year action plan has been released aimed at changing how support for those in need is delivered. While support will continue for school lunch programs and emergency food banks, the government is also investing in ways to improve sustainability in the community. How they can access food, how they can grow their own food, access to nutritional programs as well about what good food is versus what what poor food choices are. This is the example of the resilient side of, of things. Um, the children are asking for recipes, they're taking recipes home. Two million dollars in funding has been allocated to the project. Students from the state's north have called Checkmate in search of qualifying through to the state inter-school chess championships. More than 150 students from 12 different schools took part in today's event across two divisions. 
We have, I think it's about prep to grade 12 here today. Sometimes we get a kinder that, that wants to play. Um, and they play seven games, no matter what. And even if they win or even if they lose, they normally play people that are on the same score as them. I play at least 10 games a week, like easily. Today I'm winning quite often, but it's probably 50-50, just depending on how well I play and if I can get into a good position. A Southern event will take place next term before the students battle it out in the state final in Term 4. This year's Glover Art Prize finalists now have a new place to call home, moving south into the Henry Jones Art Hotel. Employees are hosting guided tours of the 20 paintings with a special focus on the winning piece. My PhD dealt with ideas of displacement and repair and mending um, and I was thinking about um, these situations but not dealing with it explicitly and I kind of wanted to do a painting around that. It's great to actually to see the um, winning prizes and how varied they are in their interpretation and representation of a Tasmanian landscape. The public can view the collection for free. A Hobart couple has pocketed $775,000 on April Fool's Day, but the win was no prank. The pair hit the jackpot after placing their usual numbers online in the Division 1 Tats Lotto. The winners say the money will help pay off the house mortgage with a potential holiday and a new boat also on the cards. Kingborough is hoping to build on its strong start to the NPL season in the Laco Seljak Cup this weekend. The side is full of confidence, having scored 11 goals in the last two matches. Facing the second tier side Northern Rangers on Sunday, they say there'll be no change to how they prepare for the knockout clash. We've got identity in which we try and demonstrate regardless of the context. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep things pretty, pretty standard. In the WSL, Launceston United is flying high, starting the season with three wins from three matches. One of their stars says their 4-2 win over powerhouse Clarence was a good test. First time we've been behind this season, it was a good test of how our team responded to that. And um, thankfully, as the result has shown, we responded really well to that. Launceston United faces Burnie United in the Statewide Cup on Saturday. Tasmanian basketballer Lucas Walker has claimed silver at the 3x3 Basketball Asia Cup Grand Final last night. The Mongolians ending Australia's quest for a fourth consecutive title with a two-point shot from the arc with less than two minutes remaining. Australia's women's team won gold against New Zealand. And despite a rough start to his campaign, Tasmanian athlete James Hansen has won bronze in the Australian Track and Field Championships in Brisbane. He was leading in the final straight of the 5,000 metres, but was overtaken near the finish. Hansen missed out on the 1,500 metres on Friday due to flight cancellations. Bit of a disappointing start for him. Luckily, he made up for it in the end, Kim. Good evening, Hobart. 21 degrees today. Launceston and Burnie, 19. Devonport recorded 18. 22 was the warmest at Campania and Bushy Park. Most temperatures above or close to average today. Friendly Beaches and Grove, 21. St Helens, 20. Smithton, Low Head and Flinders Island, all 19. King Island, 18. Strawn, 15. Lyawini, 15 as well, after a cold minus one to start the day. Patchy cloud over us today with the westerlies blowing heavier cloud over over the west coast. Parts of Western Australia under low cloud, an onshore flow has cloud over coastal New South Wales and Queensland. Tomorrow high pressure zones will be to our east and west and a weak cold front will be there to the southwest, not bothering us too much. West northwesterly winds to 20 knots over the west coast but a bit stronger, 30 knots over southern waters, lighter winds over the north and east. We do have a strong wind warning there in the south that's been issued for waters between Tasman Island and Low Rocky Point. Into Tuesday we go and Hobart are partly cloudy 21, 21 also for Adventure Bay, bit of cloud over Taralea, 5 overnight, 17 the maximum tomorrow. 23 for Launceston and partly cloudy but fine. Fine also for Devonport and Bridport, tops of 21 degrees. Burnie tomorrow 20 and partly cloudy. The chance of a shower for Strawn in those winds, 18 the top, 18 also for Marrowar. While down the east coast, 22 for St Helens and Swansea. A mostly sunny day on Flinders Island, white mark 21 degrees. On to Wednesday, morning fog followed by a light shower over the west and south and possibly over the northwest later. Showers over the northeast on Thursday extending to remaining northern and eastern parts and increasing in the evening. And showers across the state on Friday tending to rain over the north and east. Further north, Perth, a fine 25 tomorrow, sunny and warm in Adelaide and Melbourne. Showers on the way for Sydney, 23 there, partly cloudy but fine in Brisbane and stormy over the far north.
Cloudy in Hobart at 16 at the moment, 13 right now in Launceston, partly cloudy in Devonport and 14. Not a bad start to autumn, Kim. Still trying to get used to this non-daylight saving time and of course your car now has the right time on its clock for the first time in six months. <laughs> You're actually right. Why change it more than you have to? Thanks, Merv. That is all your news for this evening. I'll be back later with updates. Good night, everyone.